do better and make a difference in your child's life, regardless of whatever um, this woman is saying about you. Amen. Regardless of whatever this this woman is saying about you, have said about you, want to say about you, um, you can do better. And how how do you do better? How do we do better? By building yourself up. You have to start building yourself up. You have to say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You have to start submitting to the will of God, getting out a pen and a pad and saying, this is going to be my routine for the day. And start putting yourself in the way of goodness. Putting yourself in the way of goodness. See, it's easy to be jacked up. That's easy. It's easy to go, you know what, man? <sighs> I'm going to go catch this game. I ain't going over there. I don't feel like hearing a mouth. If I go over there and see my son, I'm going to have to hear a mouth. And her mom is over there. Dog, that's the family you chose to have a baby with. So you know what? You on this ship already, baby. You got to ride this thing out because it's not about them. It's about you and him. It's about you and him. It's about the child. No, it's about you and him. Because the more you pull yourself away, the less you become more desensitized. So now you're jacked up and now he's jacked up because he thinks that you don't want him. He thinks that you don't want to spend time with him. He's not important. So now you have to start Take out a pen and paper and put yourself in, uh, into the way of goodness. How, what do I mean by that? Read the 91st Psalms to yourself. Knowing that God wants to protect you. By knowing that God would, wanted to, wants to protect you and wants to lead you and guide you, you now know that you have worth. The fact that Jesus Christ would have died for you if you was the only person on the planet. Now you have worth. For the Lord says there are treasures in earthen vessels. There are treasures in earthen vessels. You are an earthen vessel. Therefore, therefore, God loves you. Amen. And he wants, I'm sorry. God loves you and he wants you to understand that no matter what you go through, lo, although I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he says, I'm right there with you. And he's talking about you walking through. He said, I will lead you and guide you into all truth. So no matter where you are, God is walking with you. And you have to know that. And see, once you start to build yourself up in the worth of the Lord, that's his fortitude. You come to the Lord and say, Lord, you know what? I need your help. Just simple stuff. Don't, don't stop with all that. Well, you got to pray for an hour. Because didn't his disciples pray for an hour? Half people tell you that ain't even praying. They ain't praying for 20 minutes. Don't even worry about that. Stop worrying about what other people are doing and be concerned about what you're supposed to do. I want you to skip, just get before the Lord and say, hey, Lord, Lord, I need your help. Jesus, I need your help. Write it down. Today, I'm going to do this. Today, I'm going to stop by um, such and such house and I'm going to drop off. Five dollars worth of something and something. Today I'm gonna go by my. I'm I'm just gonna uh go by and see my uh, unexpectedly or go by and drop something off for my son. Amen. Or my daughter. Start putting yourself in the way of goodness. Amen. How long do we want to keep doing the wrong thing? See, because it's, it's see, and our flesh is no good thing. If you read the works of the flesh, right? If you read the works of the flesh, um, it's Galatians chapter, got it right here in my Bible. Galatians chapter five, right? As black people say, the book of Galatians. <laughs> okay, so it says here. Um, all right, where is it at? This writing is so small. The works of the flesh are obvious. It's sexual immorality, 
debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, and envy and drunkenness, orgies, and such that are alike. Now, all those things are the works of the flesh. In other words, when we're born, we're born, we're born, born in sin. Sin means uh, separated from God, shaping in iniquity. Shaping in iniquity means that the some of these things will have a will form in our lives. Amen. Some of these things will form in our lives. So I want you to know that some of these things will form greater in our lives, like idolatry, witchcraft, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies. You may have one thing that's more stronger than the other. So therefore, these things are easy to do because they're in your flesh. Although you're born again, like I'm born, I'm a born again. All things have passed away. All things have passed away. That means, what does the Bible mean when it says that? That means that, that you are totally atoned. But flesh, you're still in this body. This body still wants what it wants. That's why the body has to be destroyed and has to be a new heaven and a new earth. Therefore, when you say that things about not going to visit your son or your daughter, that's your flesh. And it's easy to do because you're already tired from work. You're already tired from hearing the man come down on you or you're tired from walking in your own foolishness. And now... It's like, oh, I don't feel like going, dealing with this. You have to deal with it. You have to deal with it. How about sitting down with her mama? You know, um, your your ex-girlfriend's mama and say, hey, mom, hey, hey, mom, I'm sorry for treating your daughter like that. Hey, pops, tell her pop. I'm sorry for everything that went down. I'm trying to be better. And after that, don't, don't just do better. Don't keep reminding people. I'm trying, Pop. I'm trying. No, no. You just you just do. Just do it. Even when you feel yourself slipping, even when you still show up late, because you will show up late again and you will do something wrong again. But still keep going. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You still have to push yourself. That's the only way we're going to get to the next level. It's rough. Doing stuff, paying people back, doing stuff. That's all can be rough to your flesh. Wish your hang up. But don't sit there and find this is my hang up. And you hang up, pitch the body, you ball it up. I'm going to burn it. Look, that's nice. I, I don't have nothing against it. I'm not coming against nobody's ministry. At the end of the day, it's this. Every time it comes up in your mind, Lord, help me. Not, you know, we, we, and, and don't do it for, to let everybody see, Lord, help me with my smoking and that drinking in Jesus' name. So everybody can see you. Don't do all that. Just say it inside yourself. Or you can just say it out like, Lord, help me with this drinking. Even while you're drinking, ask the Lord for his help. Stop playing like, <laughs> stop playing like everything is cool because it's not cool. It's not cool. Dad, I'm telling you, this will help you. The, the goodness of God will start to rise up on the inside of you. And, and then you walking in goodness will just be a lifestyle. It won't be an effort. But at first, it may seem like an effort. But even in the effort, you're still leaning on God, and He's still walking you with, walking with you. Amen. You know. So how about going back to your your old girlfriend, you know, your baby mom, I should say, and saying, "Hey, look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just sorry." You know, if you want, if we're going to make this next move in the United States, if we're going to make this next move on the inside of the black culture, if we're going to make this next move on the inside of the American culture or humanity, we have to, we have to move forward. Amen. Somebody said, wrong, abortions kill black people. Abortions kill black people. Okay. All right. I'm reading somebody's comment. Abortion, of course, abortions kill black people. But the decision to have the abortion is a real thing that's killing. <laughs> it's killing them. Amen. You abandon your child, kill black people. Locking black men up in jail also kill black people. Don't 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 just say, oh, I see, it's abortion. See, you're trying to hang on to one thing so you can have something to, 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 to whine about. Oh, God, it's abortions. No, deal with you. 
Deal with you, dog. Deal with you. At the end of the day, if you dealt with, dealt with you, I deal with me. I try to do right. You try to do right. When we meet on the road, some we both want to say hello. We both want to speak back. You see what I'm saying? So don't don't get caught up in, oh well, I am I'm trying to do this over here. And you know, but they over there doing they, they have this abortion clinic. At the end of the day, you gotta pray for the people who want to get abortion. Everybody who's getting an abortion, let me just address this, is not trying to piss God off. Don't think that people are having abortions to say, I want to piss the Lord off. So I'm gonna have an abortion. No. Some people are having an abortion because they're afraid of judgment. They're afraid of not being economically sound. They're afraid of having a baby. There are anxieties and also um, chemical imbalances in people's minds where they have torment of having a baby. So they're not, everybody's not out to piss God off. And God knows this. You get what I'm saying? God knows this. Amen. So that's what I have to say about. Abortion. So we can't just jump on people. Oh my God. Oh my God. They have an abortion. Do you believe? I'm like, Negro, you allow people to get people locked up. So we can't fall in that. That's what I said. We have to work on us. Stop lying. Lying also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knowing that the, the brother paid, knowing that the brother paid his um gave you child support, but he don't have no paper trail. Now you're going to lie. Now he never paid it. All because you pissed off about something. Either you pissed off about him not being with you or him about he was somebody else or because you want sex and you can't get it from him. But where it is, that's why we got to hang up those things and work on us. Because all these things will always exist. They will always exist. Amen. Oh, man, I need some water. I'm sorry. So I'm just saying this morning that we have to be wiser. We have to be wise. Amen. So that's my message to the men this morning. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> I know you're not saying this nigga going to get in my behind and tell me some happy Father's Day. That's right. Brother D. Prince Louis Radio Show, baby. I shoot from the hip. I really do. And I don't shoot from the hip to tear people down. I'm all about uh, building people up. I'm not about, you know, well, you know, you don't got three streams of income. How many people you know got really got three streams of income? A stream. A lot of people don't. So stop acting like you do. You're working with one, we're working in one job, and we're trying to make the best of that and trying to get enough strength to go to the next one if we got to. And everybody can't quit their job to be an entrepreneur. Because they quit their job. What how they gonna pay their life bill? How they gonna pay their, how they gonna pay their mortgage? How they go pay their rent? Stop jumping on people with foolishness. It's foolishness. And, we're, and the only reason we're talking that way is because we didn't have a breakthrough. And now we want to dump on people with foolishness. Amen. Want to dump on people with foolishness because we're so bitter. Because we're bitter. We got to start opening our mouths up, help people get a, help, help people get a job. You know somebody is struggling, be like, oh yo, let me let me do this. And as black people, you're obligated to do it. Yes, that's 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 my that's my thought. People may get mad, but you're obligated to do it. Because you can't complain about the black race and then say, Well, I'm not gonna help them Negroes. They ain't coming up here busting my job up. No, 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 no. You can have a Negro, you know, we had a little Negro talk with each other. Like, look, I know you like to drink a little bit. I know you like to spread off at the mouth a little bit, but if you come up here, don't come up here with that. Can I trust you? Because if I can trust you, I'm going to put your bid in on the job. That's how we talk to each other. Just put it where it is. See, we keep wanting to make it like, I'm a Christian. Let me pray for you in Jesus' name. No, nigga, I'm going to pray that you keep your mouth straight. That you keep your heart straight. That in the morning that you're going to start turning towards God. I can't control you, but I want you to know. If I'm vouching for you, I need something back from you. Because I'm putting my name here with you. And it's cool. And if they mess up, now you know. Now you know. But watch out. The Holy Ghost still may say, give him another chance after that. And after that, seven times seven, 70 times seven. Amen. So um, I just want to, once again, 
those who listen to me, I talk straight, but I don't tear you down. I talk straight, but I'm not going to tear you down. I'm not going to tear you down because you're making $15. People say, you make only make $15 an hour. That's what I make. If I marry somebody, make $15 an hour. Don't, don't expect a $400,000 house unless God does something supernatural. Ain't going to happen. Don't get married, then get mad. Amen? I know I'm going off my message a little bit, but you know how black folk get when we start talking anyway. But anyway, um, so I wanted to say about that. Uh, last week, I, I gave some advice to our Caucasian pastors. And my advice to the Caucasian pastors is what? Don't invite black people in your congregation to your um, equality meetings when you talk when, you, when you're on camera, because and ask them what can you do, what can they do, because they will never be truthful with you, because they have too much reverence for you. You have to write people on the outside when it, when it talks about race relation, you have to write invite people in who who are not um, who are not uh, a part of your congregation because that person will speak to you plainly. And we need to speak to people plainly about these things because a lot of things, a lot of pastors out here right now, since I made that statement last week, I've seen a multitude of pastors come on and have to recant things they said because they didn't even hear themselves. They couldn't even hear themselves in their racist statements. I'm like, oh my God, you can't hear that? But then somebody called them. I don't know. Because everybody got black friends. And one black friend. No, I'm playing. Everybody got everybody has a black friend. Amen. I might say everybody. I'm talking about the black people. But the thing is, you know, it has that friend where, hey, you know, they're gonna come in and they're gonna tell you the truth. Amen. You know, I don't know who this Wade Jackson is, but my God, you got to you gotta go get a life, brother. <laughs> America is America is racist. Wade, Wade says America is not racist. America is racist. And the fact that you said that lets me know that you're delusional. But anyway, <laughs> but it's all right, baby. Jesus love you. But, you know, that's delusions. You know, you know, you think that, well, I, I, I'm not going to run down the, the, the aisle of tyranny that has been going on, but uh, America, um, America is racist. And when I say America, I'm talking about the people in control of America. Amen. Not the people who just live here. Amen. But um, what I'm going to do right now is play some music really fast. I gotta play one one quick song real fast. And so we can um I can grab my give me one second. I'm sorry. Play some music real fast. I'm, See, I'm not in the studio right now, so I'm at home. So mm -hmm. it's a little, it's a little different. Here we go. While well, I grab my my book, so I can share this with you. Give me one second.
Mm -mm. All right. All right, all right, all right. So, sorry about that. I had to grab my book. My kids are asleep, so I can't, I can't just order them around like that. <laughs> anyway, I'm back. Don't let them know about it. It's my song, man. That's my song. That is my song. All right, so, all right, so here we go. So, um, I had, uh, I had uh, brought up last week basically um, some scripture, scriptures that are great, really great for not last week, but for last, but um, from people, for men, and, for men and women to know um, certain things that we need to know as as believers. I only went up the stairs, and I'm like tired. What's, what's that about? I do my walking every morning. I don't understand it. Um, but I'm going, I'm coming from Romans chapter seven, talking about the marriage of Christ. I think I said this last week, but um, I have to repeat a little bit of it because um, we have to understand um, why are we, why Jesus had to die? Why? And it's important for us to know, we need to know all our little steps of salvation. So we'll know, okay, no sound. All right. Hey Amen, Pastor, can you hear me now? Let me see. Can you hear me now? Let me see, can I still hear you? All right, here we go. Let me see if I can hear myself real fast here. Let me see I'm trying to, I think you guys can hear me. All right, let me just, let me see chat. You hear me? All right. Oh, okay. Thanks, Mel Mel. All right. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But we talk about the marriage, um, the marriage of Christ. And um really starts in Romans chapter six and goes into chapter seven, the marriage of Christ. What's really important about the marriage of Christ is that we are crucified with Christ and we die. Because remember, we were married to the law or to the law of Moses, we were married to it. Since we were married to it, that means that we had to serve it. And whenever we came up short of the law, in the law, the curse of the law comes on us. So if we break one of the law or one of the commandments, all of the curses that are written in the book of Deuteronomy, all of them come on us. And God knew that even though, so the law is, let me go back to the law. So the law is holy. The law is just. The law is good. The problem is when you're married to it, you can't keep it. Amen. That means that you can't keep it. So when you're married to the law, but so Christ had to come and die. He had to be the perfect sacrifice and die. And when he died, Romans chapter 6, it said we, was, we were dead with him and that we resurrected with him. Why is that important? Because in the book of Romans chapter 7, it talks about as long as you're married to your spouse, you're bound to them unless one dies. So we had to, so when Jesus Christ went to the cross and we received him and we died with him, 
It separates us from the law. People say, well, why would I want to be separated from the Ten Commandments? Because you can't keep it. <laughs> See, it's really important that you keep it. That's why when a lot of people start talking about, I don't want to keep the Ten Commandments. We got to put the Ten Commandments back in school. You can't keep it. And if you live under the law, the curse of the law, see, the law comes with a curse. Although the although the, the Ten Commandments is good and it's just, but you're not. You're going to find some way, one, one, one part of the day you're going to break it. It's going to, you, you're going to, oh, I broke it. Now all, now all of this curse will come on you. What's the curse? Kids going to be taken away. You're going to lose your land. You know what I mean? You, <laughs> you, you know, um, poverty is going to follow you. All, all this, all these curses come upon you. See, and this is why man had to, this, I'm sorry, this is why Jesus had to die. And he had to die and resurrect. Remember, Feast of Passover is what? His death on the cross, the shedding of blood. Then the Feast of Unleavened Bread was what? The removal of sin. That's just what the Feast of Unleavened Bread is about. Then the Feast of First Fruit is what? The Feast of Resurrection. He resurrects. That's why this feast day is important to know. So you can see the, the old coming into the new. It was a shadow. Then it's after that is what? The Feast of Pentecost. What was the Feast of Pentecost? The coming of the Holy Spirit to be on the inside of us that we may be endowed with the power of God to keep us and to give us authority. Amen. Remember, you know, day of Pentecost, Holy Spirit fell. Jesus said, don't go into the world without the Holy Spirit because they're going to jack you up because you don't have no power. So this is why when we talk about Romans chapter 6 is talking about us being dead with him. Seven through the death of him, dead and resurrected, I mean. And so we rise with him. And that's why we rise to the spirit. That's why we have to be under grace. Because God said, you can't make it on your own. See, he only gave you the law to show you you couldn't keep it. That's the only reason God gave you the law. Because we thought where we can, I can do this. I can keep, I can keep these commandments. I, you know, next thing you know, you look at somebody, oh, she got a big butt. Covetousness. That is, boom, you fell. Just that fast. Like that. Give me back the dice, y'all. Give me back the dice. Let me roll them again. No, but <laughs> that's that's these are important things for Christians to know. And that's why when you're preaching to people, telling people about, oh, you stop drinking, stop smoking, stop doing this. Dog, you messed up with it even without that. Because God, God said, okay, you want them to keep commandments. You can't keep the commandments. I have to completely absolve you of that. But see, by having the spirit on the inside, it makes me want to do right. Being in God's presence makes me want to do right. It makes me want to live right. You know, ain't that not, not everybody, I'm scared God gonna strike me dead. That's, see, that's old Negro talk. Oh Lord, that master gonna get me. Stop. God loves you. He wants the best for you. He wants you to own your own business. He wants you to have your own your own line or whatever you want to have, those dreams that he put inside of you. He wants those things to happen. But as long as you keep saying, I got to go back and can keep stuff. We always trying to prove ourselves to keep something. I got to keep it. I got to do it. If I don't do it, it ain't going to get done. You know what I mean? I, 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 me, me, me. It's like, dog, if you could keep it, why did Jesus die? Why did God say, I got to remove the Ten Commandments? Why, why did God say, I have to nail the Ten Commandments to the cross? Romans chapter 11. Why did he say that? So you can't negate scripture and then try to live in old things. That's why Jesus said you can't pour old wines into new skins. You can't pour the new movement of God into the old way of doing things or it busts. It'll clash. Because God said, I'm forgiving you. And you're still trying to earn it. And God was like, man, if you don't get over here and just start walking in my authority and try to try to earn things, you're out there killing calves. And God like, well, why did I hang Jesus on the cross? Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away what? The sin of the world. Receive him. Receive his death, his burial, his resurrection. The feast of what? First fruits, the feast of resurrection. 
he rose again. Amen. These are very important things that um, members of the body of Christ must know. Not members, but children of God must know. Amen. Because membership also talks about, you can't even say member. <laughs> because member signifies that you, you did something to get this. And God said, I died and extended my hands towards you. I died and I extended my hands towards you. For I loved you. That's why he says, you know, in the Old Testament says, love your neighbors, love yourself. He said, but do, but do this one. Love them as I loved you. Boom. He trumped you. No, I can't use, I can't use the term. I can't use Trump no more. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But these are things that Christians have to know. You have to know these scriptures. You have to know these things because these things are will help fortify you and renew your mind. And then let you know when you're in a line standing, you're waiting for someone to come back to tell you that you can borrow 10 grand to get a car. You know that through Jesus Christ, all things are possible. And that God wants the best for you. And that he may have somebody come in and pay for it. You don't know. But what I'm saying is whatever way he does it, you have to know that he wants to do it for you. He wants the best for you. That if something happened, like, oh, Lord, see, see, George Floyd, now I hear people, George Floyd had to die so this, so we can do this. No, 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 no. Well, God knew that they were going to do this, and now he's going to use it for our good. You got to catch that, man. You got to catch that. Because then you will, if, see, if, you, if you think like that, you will always fall into mess. Your son or daughter walking home, somebody come and beat them up. See, they had to know that. They had, so that had to happen in order for them to understand it's wrong to beat people up. No, 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 no. Guys knew that was going to happen. Sometimes he will warn us things will happen or try to happen. We can pray against it. But it's, but it's not God setting it up to do, it, to, to, to do it to teach you a lesson. He don't use evil to condone good or to show you good. He says, blessings, and, and he's, every good and perfect gift comes down from heavens above. I'm not down here beating people up to show, the, to show you something. He said, he said, now, all things work together for good to them that love them, right? So if th something comes your way, if an attack, remember, the Bible says, any weapon formed against you, everyone shall not prosper. In other words, it will be formed. It will try. It'll be attacked, but God said, well, the will not prosper is the God part. See, the will not prosper is the God part. You can, God, God is not good cop, bad cop, only one. He said you have an enemy, an enemy, amen? So it's good for you, scripture, uh, uh, Christians to read Isaiah 53, knowing what it's about. A great minister to, to really look at, I'm, I'm going to pay attention to to know this, is Pastor Joseph uh, Joseph Prince from Singapore? Not lying to you. Awesome. If you want to learn and stop dabbling in uh, one minute I'm blessed, next minute I'm cured. One minute I'm 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 of God, next minute I'm not. Oh, I messed up. God don't God don't like ugly. I'm gonna stay away from the church because I just don't feel right. Look, fall in line with God. And that'll happen, right? So, but we will be coming. Um, we'll be in the studio next week. But um, I want you to know that Fred Price Jr. is coming on with us this week. Pastor Creflo Dallas is coming on with us um, either the following week or the week after. I have to um, check my email again. Um, and they both were going to be talking about the state of the world. Mm -hmm. So Fred Price Jr. will be on on the 25th and Pastor Dallas will be coming in Either the week after or the week after. I think it's going to be the week after because what, what is that? That is, yeah, see, that's the week of the 4th of, uh, 4th of July. So he probably coming on like the 9th. Yeah, I think he's going to come on like the 9th. But nevertheless, you know, we're setting it up. Um, God is setting it up for us to, to learn from the men of God. To learn from men. And, and let's take Crestful Dollar, for instance. Here's a man who got enlightened about the grace of God. 
Russell Dow has multi millions of people. And he adjusted some things that he was teaching. That's see, that's what I want to see when it comes to men of God. Pastor Prince, Joseph Prince, he was teaching one thing at one point, and when he started to understand the grace of God, he said he pulled all of the all of the tapes from his former teaching. He pulled them. See, that's change. See, but what we but you know what foolishness is? You know, when they come, you this is foolishness and personified when we go stuff like this. We say, you know, when they when they come back and they apologize to Pastor, right? Then uh, you know, you know, then everything will be all right. Then I, you know, you come back on to the church or we we, we just say foolishness. It's just fool. It's like you're the leader. You're supposed to be the example, and you're waiting for people who you're teaching to do certain things. And I'm like, well, if you do them first, say, hey, look, come on over here. Everything will be all right. When, when, I'm talking about when there are infractions in, in, in the body or in your congregation. Just start to do right. Be loving. We always want to threaten people with, you don't love God because you don't listen to me. If you don't listen to me, God don't, God ain't, ain't impressed with you. It's like it's always about you <clears throat> when you're a leader. Let it be about the people. Let it be about the Lord. You know, don't uh, see, I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't, I don't fight pastors. Nope, ain't gonna do it. Some pastors, you know, who are my friends, who I know, nope, I'm not going to do it. Because I'm not going to fall into something with them where I can start getting resentment. You know what I mean? I try to end things on a on a note where, well, this is what I believe, and this is what you believe. Okay, that's cool. You know, I still love you. We still can get down about football, basketball, baseball. But on that, I just, I just leave it alone. Keep it moving. But we can't we, we can't fall into uh, things where we're always fighting and we have to learn to humble ourselves. OK, uh, I got like four more minutes because I only stay on for an hour. Um, I just want to um, just pray right now in Jesus name for your prosperity, for your for your healing, for your deliverance, for, that God will make uh, will cause you to walk in the and be in the head and not the tail. I bind every, every demonic force that will come up against your mind in the mighty name of Jesus. I cast down every uh, every evil imagination and every high thing that will try to exalt itself against the knowledge and the power of God through Jesus Christ. Amen. And I thank you, Lord, for prospering our people today, your people today in Jesus name. And um, in Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Um, so remember, walk in this covenant. Believe that God wants the best for you. Believe that God wants you to have something. Believe that God wants the best for you, your kids. Spend some time with your kids. Make a little Negro sit down. No, you're going to sit here and we're going to read this verse. It don't have to be long and draw it out. You're like, God going to love me more if I stay here five more minutes. No, he's not. He already told you I died for you. How much more? How much more can I love you than that? <laughs> I freaking died for you. I mean, sorry, Suzanne freaking died. I'm sorry. But you, you get what I'm saying? I, that I died for you. So just know that God loves you. He said, when our minds was far from him, in other words, when we was doing whatever we were doing, and I don't care if it was just watching paint dry on the wall. He said, I died for you. He looked into eternity's future and seen us ignoring him for at least 40 years of our life. And then he said, well, I'm going to still die for him, even though they're going to do that. Even though they're going to do that, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm forgive him. I'm going to die for him. That's what, that's what the death was for, for your forgiveness. Takes away the sin in the world. Take away the sin as what? Forgive them. Because remember, the person who was mad was God. He had to, Jesus, when Jesus died, he appeased God's wrath. Amen. In other words, he 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 stopped God from going in your mouth. That's what that's what the whole thing of Jesus Christ was for. That we may be born again. Of what? A righteous seed. Adam was seed was imperfect, and every seed came from Adam was after its own kind, which means it was of what? 
separation, sin. Amen. Jesus Christ is a righteous seed. Died, resurrected. Therefore, we receive him and we receive his goodness, his, his, his grace, his love, his, his peace. Amen. So just know that today, guys. Don't um don't fall into the all that. That's my music. That's my cue. No, I but you. <clears throat> my boy Kirk. My main man, knee high, knee high Kirk. No, but um, I'm I'm gonna post my uh, interview with Donnie McKirkland. Oh, you know who's gonna be on with next next week too? Um, Marvin Sapp. Pastor Marvin Sapp is gonna be on with us. Amen. Know that. Look, man, sister, a love you. We think the world love you. Yeah, she upstairs sleep. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm playing, but she is though, right? But um, look, we love you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you for tuning in. I, I'm telling you, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Love you, Mel. Mel, that's my baby. Mel, Mel. <laughs> All right, see you guys. God bless.